Welcome everyone back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Monica. I am a tarot reader and astrologer based in far north Queensland in Australia. And today I am looking at my tarot practice specifically with the goal of helping me choose our next uh, location for a home. So I'm going to start with a little bit of a background to the story. Um, we moved from the Wood Sundays, which is where the name Wood Sunday Oracle comes from. Uh, we moved from the Wood Sundays to Cairns in far north Queensland three years ago. And at the time we weren't really sure what to expect and how long we were going to be here for, or if this was even going to be a permanent home for us. You know, there were lots of uh, things up in the air regarding our uh, next home. And as time went by, through a set of circumstances, uh, through my husband's work, the options really got narrowed down to two options, and particularly last year. Um, it started to become obvious that we were looking at two options. Uh, one was to uh, move back to the Wood Sundays, and the second one was to move to a region called the Atherton Tablelands, which is just outside of Cairns where my husband's work was going to be relocated to. Um, we, we did have the option to remain in Cairns, he wasn't forced to move, but the fact of the matter was that it would mean that his office was going to be based about an hour away from our home, uh, driving distance, and it's not a, an easy drive either, it goes through a very steep um, portion, a very windy portion where there's always um, issues with it. It's through dense vegetation that often falls down, there's lots of accidents, it's very windy. Anyway, there's, there's a lot of issues. Not, not a drive you want to do for work every day. So, um, yeah, so it came down to, um, to those two options because of that. We were either going to move to the Atherton Tablelands, which is a stunning, stunning region in my opinion. I really love it. Um, it's um, it's up at elevation, so Cairns where we are now, it's a coastal area, whereas the Tablelands is adjacent to Cairns, adjacent to the coastal area, but it's at, at an elevation of around um, 700 meters. So you go from beaches uh, up to a mountain, um, and it's um, it's a fantastic region for agriculture, for sustainable agriculture. There's a lot of um, community groups in gardening and um, herbalism, you know, the sort of things that I'm really, really into. So for me, it held a lot of appeal. And then we're also looking at the option of returning to the Wood Sundays, which also had a lot of appeal because, um, you know, it was our home for over 10 years for me, longer for my husband, and we've got acreage there, we've got five acres, we've got a, um, a beautiful place uh, that my husband's father built. It's stunning, it's been done up since we've been away, we had friends living in it that, that have done it up, they've done an incredible job um, while they were building their house, um, and that was something else that, you know, they finished building their house and they moved out, so it was like, do we move back or do we rent it out, you know, what do we do? Um, but yeah, it, it's a really stunning region as well, the Wood Sundays in Queensland. It's like one of those really unique, special places, loads of islands, lots of tourism. Um, it's really, really beautiful. So anyhow, so because, because they, both of these locations stood out for different reasons and they both had really big uh, draw cards, but for different reasons, it wasn't like I couldn't make a decision that was like easy, an easy decision. I couldn't just go, oh, well, we're definitely moving to with Sundays because, you know, um, I don't like this region. Um, actually, I, I love the region. I love the far north Queensland and I'll always come back here um, to visit and to connect with some of the people that I've met um, while we lived here. It's it's just stunning. Um, and then, yeah, it, it, it became something that I couldn't have a clear guidance on or a clear way to make the decision. And of course, since I'm a tarot reader, <laughs> what am I to do except do a few draws on this dilemma? And today I'm going to talk about how I've used tarot and oracles to clarify the decision 
for me and to, or to clarify you know like the best option so there are two separate draws that I'm going to talk about today the first one involves an oracle and the question for this was what is the best option okay the oracle that I used is the Kantiji oracle I think this is an incredible deck I've done a review on it. I might post a link in the description box below. It's been out for a while, but I think it's unique and it's just, it's a deck of magic and potency for me. So I pulled this out and shuffled and I had my two, you know, my two options. The first option was the um, Atherton Tablelands and the second option was the with Sundays, all right? And the question, this is really important, the question was, what is the best option? So for the other 10 table ends, I got the Living Mountain. <laughs> Remember how I talked about how it's a mountainous region, um, you know, around 700 meters elevation. I think it's a bit lower in some places, like it goes down to 400. Um, but Atherton itself is around 700, I think. Um, <laughs> and I had to I had to laugh because literally we're talking about a mountainous region. And I mean, okay, it's not mountainous like you have mountains in Europe. It's not like the Alps or anything like that. It's just a lot higher than the coast. And because of that, it has a lot of cooler weather, especially in winter. Um, it's the sort of place you definitely want to have a fireplace going. Um, it doesn't get snow, but... It does get really cold, like, um, you know, three, four, five degrees um, overnight and in the mornings. That, that's really cold for a couple of months. And then for the wood Sundays, I got a fierce desert flower. Okay, and they are quite different energies. So, first of all, before reading the book, when I looked at these two options, I can't say that either of them really stood out. And the tarot and oracles will often do that when you're trying to find the best path. Well, not often, but sometimes you're going to get this, where what they're actually telling you, what the oracle is telling you is the energy of each path or the particular features of each path, you know, be it job related, you know, moving house related or whatever. It's not going to tell you that one stands out far above the other. It's not going to give you one negative and one positive. It will give you two cards, I mean one card each, that describe the features and that you need to know about, the energies that you need to know about, or the lesson that you need to know about. And I think that's, that is the case in this instance. The living mountain for me, I had to laugh when I saw this because not only it describes the, the, the region geographically as a mountain, but to me the living mountain, this card, let's have a look at it. See how it's got these eyes here? To me this said that the Atherton Tablelands is a place of magic and I've always felt that way about it, that it holds this amazing energy of like, you know, deep magic. Um, it's no wonder that it attracts a really diverse uh, population in terms of interests. You do have some mainstream agricultural communities um, and groups. You also have a really strong community garden uh, group and there's actually more than one. There's about two or three of them. There are seed saver groups. There's a really big and thriving biodynamic um, gardening group uh, that, that meets every month and does biodynamics uh, related workshops and courses and things like that. Um, I've gone up there to attend uh, herbal medicine workshops that have been uh, incredible. None of those are in the Wood Sundays, uh, you see. Uh, I mean, there might be a little bit of it, but nothing to that scale. And so to me, that's what this card talked about. You know, this is a place of magic, right? Now, when I look at the book, the meaning of this card is about challenges and obstacles and learning to befriend those challenges and obstacles and work with them and see them as a really valuable lesson. So from that sense, it wasn't like an incredible 
a positive card, but it wasn't a negative one really either. It was just saying, look, there's going to be some challenges that will benefit you in your growth, right? It's not going to be all like, you know, sun and rainbows. <laughs> okay, so that's that. And then for the Wood Sundays, I got a fierce desert flower. And I've often felt that way about our property in the Wood Sundays is that, you know, I've, I've often called it our sanctuary, right? Um, I love that we've planted fruit trees in it. And I love just the energy that it holds. I love that it's coastal. Um, it connects to the islands, my husband can go fishing, and I've got five acres to grow my herbs and to have this little sanctuary, and I'm even looking at doing some workshops in the future perhaps, um, and certainly kickstarting my tarot and astrology consultancy again, that's been on the back burner for the last couple of years. And I just see it as a place where it's nowhere near as uh, rainy as <laughs> the tablelands. I mean, it gets a lot of rain, but it's concentrated over like two or three months. Um, and then you have about six months when it doesn't rain at all. And it really feels like a desert sometimes because everything goes brown. And I kind of see our place as this place that flowers um, spiritually um, and energetically amongst... Um, that sort of landscape, um, yeah, it's, it's a bit hard to hard to really describe it, uh, but I loved that it is a flower, you know, that it's a blooming flower in such a prickly <laughs> plant. And I'm going to read to you very quickly uh, what the book says about the fierce desert flower. The keynotes are thriving in harsh conditions ardent vibrance in what appears to be a barren situation. And the guidance talks about three things that are equally important. First, blossoming is either imminent or in full unfurled wonder. This blooming could be an aspect of yourself, a relationship, a project, or the culmination of a long labor or path. And I absolutely feel that. And I'll talk about that in another video about where I'm at now with my tarot work and astrology work and you know how I feel about pursuing this path. Whether it is something in you or in your life is ready to explode in color and presence and to be seen. And as is the purpose of any flower, that is, this is something that will draw further support to you once you let it show. The second factor to consider when you're drawn to this archetype is that the difficulties of your situation are not hindrances. In fact, the challenges of your circumstances are the very things that are enabling you to create the level of beauty and wonder that is now gestating and building within, or perhaps now emerging and unfurling from your life or being. Last, but by no means least, this archetype has a fierce quality to it. This is not merely a pretty little posy. This is a blossom that dares to bloom in the face of adversity. Anyway, so and he goes on about it. Um, this is a flower that lasts and succeeds in its mission because it emerges from a deeply rooted and long cultivated power. And I tell you what, that describes my tarot journey absolutely 100% um, to a T. So... So this was what I needed to know about each of those paths. It didn't tell me clearly that one was absolutely better than the other. It just told me what I needed to know if I choose to pursue either of these paths. Okay. And the next reading I did was late one evening after everyone had gone to bed. And the question in this case was which one of those two paths will actually manifest? Okay, now which one is the best, but which one will manifest? Because I just wanted to know. <laughs> you know, I sometimes I, I just want to know. Okay, I've gone backwards and forwards. I've weighed the pros and cons. I've spent like literally hours talking about, the, you know, each option with my husband in my head. Um, you name it. So in doing this spread, I got out two of my most important decks that I have in my collection. The first one is the Universal Rider Waite Smith, okay, and the second one was the Heindel. Okay, these are really potent decks in my collection. 
um, they are for me like the decks, they're my go-to decks when like I just need to know an answer please. And I did something unusual in that I got both of them out at the same time and I don't often do that. Um, hardly ever do that. I usually go to one or the other. And they're potent for me because the Universal Rider Weight is my very first deck that I've ever bought out of curiosity. Okay, and here we are, you know, 17 years later or whatever it is. And the Heindel I bought very shortly after. And it was a deck that I just bonded with like nothing else and just holds for me um, potency and um, magic and I've, I can't really describe, describe it. So anyhow, so I got the, those two decks and the first one, first up I went with the Universal Rider Waite Smith and the first card for um, I drew for the Wood Sundays was the sun and straight away I went on that and I was I just saw it you know I flipped that one first for the wood Sundays and I went whoa that's like a really strong card you can't get much stronger than that in fact I would say it's stronger than the universe card because sometimes the universe card just indicates completion and things coming to an end all right so you gotta be very careful how you interpret the universe card particularly when it's the only card, like it's not in combination with other cards. And then for the Atherton Tablelands, I got the Chariot. Okay, so it's two majors in that sense. They're both on equal footing, if you like. And neither of them is positive or negative as such, but to me the Sun always takes precedence over the Chariot in terms of how positive um, of an answer it is. And how much it's saying yes okay and then I got out my um, my Heindel tarot and for the Wood Sundays I got the star and for the Atherton Tablelands and this is what sealed the deal I got the five of Pentacles and this was clear cut that the Wood Sundays is where we are moving to for our next home. There was no ambiguity here. You know, the Five of Pentacles is such a card of um, difficulty and adversity and challenges and strife and being poor in health, poor in resources. It's not a card you want to see and it's certainly not a positive card. I don't care um, for people who say, you know, there's a positive with every card. When you're asking yes or no and you get the five of pentacles, that's a no. <laughs> okay, it's it's clear cut. Okay, so yeah. Um, and so I am now very happy to say that we are certainly moving, returning to the Wood Sundays. I'll be putting Wood Sunday back into Wood Sunday Oracle. And um, I'm not sure how often I will post over the next couple of months. Uh, I'll keep it up for a month and I'll try and do some extra videos to upload while we're actually moving. Um, it's quite a mammoth task to move because of the amount of packing. It's not just the packing, it's uh, the fact that we have to do a bond clean. Uh, I'm not sure what happens in, in America or in Europe when people move, but here in Australia you have to do what is called a bond clean. And the options are either you hire a cleaning company that will actually provide a receipt to say they've done a bond clean, and that's around $1,200 plus, like minimum $1,200 for our a size, a house our size, which is just four bedrooms, two bathrooms. Uh, or, you know, I'll be doing it myself, which is what I prefer to do because then you know we only have to pay for those things that we might miss but i'll try and be very thorough and you know bond clean means you clean everything like you wash walls you pull the dishwasher out you clean behind it you pull out drawers you dust everything ceilings ev like everything gets a thorough clean so anyway uh, but that's okay because I've, I've wrapped up my other professional work which is part-time but still took a big chunk of my time and so I do have time to pack I do have time to um, you know um, do all the cleaning that's required and I still more most importantly still have time to do my videos and upload those so anyhow I'm going to wrap it up now 
Uh, I hope this was informative for you, useful or just entertaining, if nothing else. And as always, until my next video, take care.